Uh, welcome you all in this lecture series. I am Anurag Chaudhary and I am going to discuss about the condition monitoring and the file diagnosis in which we discuss about the different maintenance strategies and some important machine learning tool to implement the diagnostic approach. Uh, at the end of this series you are able to implement a diagnostic tool for your machine uh, so without wasting a time let's start as you know every day we rely on a wide range of machines but the truth is that every machine eventually breaks down unless being it's been uh, maintained uh, uh, so when we talk about the uh, machine code failed uh, when we talk about the machine code failed it's directly affect to the downtime cost fault propagation reduce the lifetime mean it's reduced the overall lifetime in that particular machine and if we talk about the industrial application there is a constant call for reduction of main operational and the maintenance cost of these rotating machines and the most effective way of reducing these cost would be continuously monitor the health of these machines uh, in which the term condition monitoring uh, basically the condition monitoring it is a method of monitoring a uh, condition parameter in a machinery like vibration current temperature torque flux and any other parameters uh, strain pressure to detect a significant change that is indicative of a fault in progress uh, such as example if we have an induction motor and there are some very related issues is there so we easily predict that uh, there are some very related fault during uh, uh, developing a uh, predictive maintenance approaches algorithms using our machine learning we can easily predict that uh, at an early stage so in deep we will discuss about uh, we will discuss on the deep at, uh, at uh, each of fault under the motor machines like gearing uh, rotor related fault and which kind of issue is there so we can predict that using the condition monitoring and the condition monitoring is an important part of the predictive maintenance and the engineers follow the different maintenance strategies uh, to increase the operational reliability availability of machine uh, that is the uh, reactive maintenance uh, preventive maintenance and the predictive maintenance so if we go for the reactive maintenance uh, reactive maintenance where the machine is used to its limits and repair perform only after the machine got fit okay uh, take an example if we talk about uh, light lamp uh, and it got damaged it got fused so what you first thing is coming to man uh, go to the market and take a new one and then replace it so it makes sense uh, with a low initial low low investment like a bulb but if we have a complex and a large uh, expensive machines is there so uh, how can we think about that so we can't replace suppose we have a uh, five product machines is there common the cost of that particular machine is in a crore so how can we replacement is not a possible so we can repair the particular part of that machine so it's very costly thing about that and uh, so it's uh, that you can't uh, realize risk running it to be failure completely failure so because it will be extremely costly to repair and it's directly affect the cost and uh, and, and uh, it's also about the safety issues that uh, that's why engineers try to prevent failure before it occur uh, these engineers are doing by uh, making a regular checkups on the their machine and they can easily do the maintenance so that is called the uh, preventive maintenance uh, in that pre preventive maintenance we uh, use a regular interval checkups on the machines uh, like uh, we fix uh, 
amount of time, um, amount of time and we're doing the maintenance of a particular level uh, the big issue in the uh, preventive maintenance is that uh, to determine the when to do maintenance means it's not fixed it suppose we do the maintenance at uh, a monthly uh, after six months quarterly so it's depend on that but we don't know about the when the failure is come okay since we don't know about the when failure will occur uh, and uh, so we can do the maintenance at early stage so by doing this maintenance uh, at uh, early stage and we can say the this is also directly affect to the wasting of machine life uh, that's still usable suppose we have uh, as you shown the cross on the that is the actual uh, damage but we provide the maintenance at the early stage so the machine is still usable condition is there so we lose that particular useful life of that particular machines okay uh, so that's why and it's directly add to your cost the cost but okay uh, so now we are come to the uh, predictive maintenance uh, if we can able to predict when machines go failed and when failure will occur at uh, you can provide the preventive maintenance is here okay so to predict the that right before the failure so if we know the failure when will occur then we try to find the optimal time and uh, what is the exact time uh, just before the uh, predicted failure we can apply the maintenance okay so it is also about the uh, uh, pinpoint problem in your complex machinery and that uh, uh, helps you to identify the what uh, which part uh, of you need to be fixed suppose uh, I, I just uh, I already discussed about an induction motor and uh, there are some bearing related issue so but the particular fault we can easily identify with the, this product maintenance model. and there are some rotor related issue bearing related, related issue eccentricity related issues misalignment is there so we can easily differentiate uh, uh, that particular fault so in this way we can easily uh, enhance the machine availability and the maximum use of life that particular machine and uh, the predictive maintenance is require initial investment as you that uh, the need of developing some an algorithm to predict a time window that going to be show you within a now many days how many days uh, your machine will be failed so that uh, to compute in that uh, it requires some initial uh, investment okay and uh, it is also important to uh, when you need to do maintenance it's also talked at all about that uh, this algorithm when you uh, implement this uh, this uh, machine learning based algorithm you can also easily uh, predict the maintenance uh, time uh, okay uh, that is the most important thing is that and uh, the basic flow uh, if you uh, talk about the flow of this uh, predictive maintenance so these flow are similar with the all categories like transfer and vibration and go for the acoustic emission this is the similar pattern for that all the strategies so first of all we require uh, to acquire some information from the machine suppose if we talk about the vibration so we need to acquire some accelerometer in that uh, machine and acquiring the vibration related data and infrared thermography can also use so i will discuss about that uh, then the pre-process the raw data uh, pre-processing is there that different pre-processing technique there are discrete wavelet transform you can easily use for decomposition of your data hilbert transform is there uh, for your transform stft short term for your transform is there. So different basic uh, pre-processing techniques are available you can easily adopt it uh, for your work and the other thing is some extracting the some useful information from that particular raw data and the filter data also uh, that the statistical features like time domain and the frequency domain time frequency domain data you can extract the information parameter from that uh, filter data and then you go for the feature selection with the relevant or the irrelevant feature if you do you have uh, some optimal feature with the useful information uh, and uh, they are trying to predict uh, uh, with a highly ac accuracy so we can use that uh, features uh, suppose the mean 
that is not providing a good information extract of uh, rms it's providing good information entropy kurtosis glitch factor these all are the features the statistical feature that you can say the time domain feature if we talk about the mean frequency uh, peak frequency so you have different feature then you can use the feature selection techniques like a pca nca and uh, gene genetic algorithm also they are uh, PC, pso okay optical swarm or uh, organic uh, optical swarm is there also so you can different approaches of feature selection is there relief algorithm is there you can also use uh, uh, we will discuss about all and uh, the finally the main important term is trainer model so when you train a model it is important to in some important parameters there like the overfitting underfitting your model should not be uh, overfitted not be overfitted not be underfitted so there is the time on uh, it's all depend on your data uh, which type of data you have filtering accuracy and the optimal feature selection what is the procedure so if you get it we will discuss about that and the finally you can able to predict the fault which kind of fault in the machine like a rotor fault bearing fault which uh, type of fault you can easily predict the fault so this is the basic flow uh, chart of predictive maintenance you can easily follow with the infrared follow with the vibration acoustic emission and any other approach so now the application of condition monitoring if you are a good uh, condition monitoring engineer then you have a lot of ways to earn a lot of money and you got a good package from these industry a rolling meals you can easily provide the oil and gas sector with the need of condition monitoring engineer and then marine also and some mines mines in the mines uh, there are some instrument rotating machines and drills so we need to condition monitoring of that particular uh, drills are there and uh, mines are there and the automotive okay so now the EV is coming so we try to monitor that uh, uh, brushless DC motor is there induction motor is in the automotive electric vehicles is there so we have tried to uh, predict the faults before it occurring in that uh, power generation you have a different type of capacitor generation generator are there so this need to be condition monitoring engineer is there uh, aerospace also is there okay and there are different condition monitoring methods like uh, vibration motor current signature analysis that is mcsa in which uh, we acquire the information of uh, current from the machines uh, from any any induction motor any rotating machine uh, in the most of the case the induction motor in the induction motor is uh, mostly used by more in all the industry so we try to prove the current flow from uh, uh, induction motor in acquiring the current value uh, similar in the vibration we try to put an accelerometer on the top of uh, uh, induction motor and acquiring some vibration related information from that after that we can process this information to uh, predicting the fault and like uh, infrared thermography uh, that is measuring uh, about the uh, temperature we can extract the thermal image which provide uh, thermal distribution over all of the surface of motor uh, where the temperature is increased and where the high temperature the hot spot we can easily uh, identify from that but we, we can say the, this is a fast algorithm fast developed algorithm we can easily early stage uh, in for thermography also okay uh, the next is uh, acoustic emission we can also use for that acoustic emission sensor to be put in the in the chemical and oil of the lubrication oil we can easily detect the fault in the uh, condition of bearing as you can easily <coughs> lubrication the flux monitoring is there different flux sensor like a whole effect sensor we can measure the flux of the stator winding those if you go for the stator related fault we can easily identify the fault developing flux how much flux is developing in that so we can easily measure the torque monitoring is there and the different techniques are there uh, so in the next video we can discuss about more about the vibration and data acquisition pre-processing method which kind of pre-processing method is there and there are some hands-on implementation of the measuring math lab uh, so uh, we will discuss about uh, in this series uh, thank you thank you for watching